Last week the GMTK Game Jam of 2023 happened with the theme of roles reversed. After a lot of brainstorming I came up with the idea of controlling a flying arrow that can grind and jump off of bridges, gaining speed and height. In this video I want to explain how the arrow physics work in detail, so you, the viewer, can maybe learn something new from it. So let's begin. Here, we have an arrow. Well actually this isn't the arrow, this is the mesh of an arrow. This point is the actual arrow. Let's call it the orientation. A tip point is attached to the orientation in a way that the tip rotates around it. There's also a copy of the orientation called flat orientation. This has the same y rotation as the orientation and is used for a few calculations later on. The rotation of the orientation and the mesh is mostly independent. You'll see why later. There are two important variables to know. The vector free current direction and the float current speed. The end velocity that we set to the arrow's rigid body is always current direction times current speed. First, let's launch the arrow from our ballista. When the launch arrow function gets called from the ballista's animation, the current direction gets set to the orientation's forward direction and the current speed gets set to 15. In the air, gravity gets applied first. The script subtracts an amount every frame from the y-axis of the current direction. This causes the direction to point more downwards. The value of the gravity is based on user input. While doing nothing, it's 0.15, while holding up it's 0.1, and while holding down it's 0.25. After that, the script needs to turn the current direction based on user input. The way I achieve this is by adding the right direction of the orientation to the current direction, while multiplying it by the user input, turning speed, and the multiplier that makes turning at high speeds more sensitive. The current speed gets modified twice. First, the script subtracts this formula. This causes the arrow to accelerate while going downwards and slow down when going upwards. After that, drag gets applied which just subtracts a value that comes from a graph based on speed. The orientation gets updated after all these calculations by calling a function called update orientation. This function also updates the rotation of the flat orientation and the arrow mesh. Some smoothing gets applied to the arrow model based on if the arrow was grinding or not. This was basically all of the flying physics. Now let's talk about grinding. Well, we need to detect collisions first. A function called collision detection handles all of that. It contains two ray casts and a sphere cast to detect different collisions. First, a ray gets casted from the tip of the arrow facing the forward direction. This raycast is used to detect if the arrow hits a wall or the target found at the end of each level. The next ray also gets casted from the tip, but is moved backwards for a more consistent check. This is the raycast responsible for detecting if the arrow is grinding on the surface. If the ray check succeeds, the boolean is grinding gets set to true. A sphere cast located at the tip is used to detect collisions with the clouds found at the bottom of each map. I'm not quite sure why this is here, but it exists. Ok, now we know how collision is handled, let's actually talk about grinding. When the boolean is grinding is true, a lot of things happen. Firstly, none of the flying physics gets used. A new variable, the move direction gets set to this. Wh whatever this is. Based on unity's description, it projects a vector onto a plane defined by a normal orthogonal to the plane. This move direction will override the current direction later. While grinding, the arrow's current speed increases by a value called sliding acceleration every frame. This acceleration doesn't depend on the angle of the surface. But you know what does depend on the angle of the surface? Exactly, jumping. The arrow can jump off the surface while grinding. When the arrow jumps, the current direction gets modified. The x-axis becomes sideways jump strength multiplied by the surface normal's x-axis, the y-axis becomes jump strength multiplied by the surface normal's y-axis, times 1.5, and the z-axis always gets set to 1. But currently this direction is in local space, but we need to convert it to world space. To do this, the script uses a transform direction function on our flat orientation transform. The script also normalizes the result just in case. The boolean is grinding also gets set to false when jumping. This would make the arrow snap to a different rotation after jumping. This is why the arrow mesh gets a smoothing applied to it. The orientation and flat orientation both snap to the current direction, which makes the physics more consistent. 
The rest of the arrow script focuses on different kinds of effects such as particles when grinding, speed lines when flying, the tip heating up by grinding on surfaces, and different kinds of dynamic sound effects such as wind and grinding sounds. Most of these effects were added near the end of the jam. The last interesting thing I want to talk about is the camera setup for the game. As always, I'm using Unity's built-in Cinemachine package that makes setting up a camera follow really easy. This time I experimented with having multiple virtual cameras set up and blending between them based on what's happening in-game. There are four different camera angles that get used in-game. The first camera is made to follow the moving arrow. This is the virtual camera that's always active and has a low priority compared to the other cameras. The second camera is the launch camera. This never moves and is placed behind the ballista. This camera gets used every time you're on the main menu. The grind camera follows and looks at the tip transform of the arrow. It also has a large amount of shake applied to it, which is done with cinemachine noise. The last camera is used for the cinematic shot right before hitting the target. This is probably the most hated camera angle, because it makes aiming the arrow harder right at the end of the level. But it definitely looks cool. Most cameras have a slight noise or screen shake applied to them. This gives a sort of a handheld or windy feeling. Thanks for watching this rather short video, I hope you learned something new. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a like and if you like this sort of content, then make sure to subscribe. See ya!